Dr. William Davis here, author of the Wheat Belly and Undoctored books. Why did I call this video Wheat Belly, Bagel Face, and Pretzel Brain? Well, I'm, I'm trying to drive home the point that there's virtually no organ that wheat and grains don't affect in some bad way, some destructive way. So I call it a wheat belly because one of the big effects of consuming wheat and grains is you grow visceral fat, that is fat, that encircles the organs like the intestines, the liver, the pancreas, but is also evident on the surface as love handles or muffin top. So if you have that kind of a roll of fat around your waist, you know you have deep visceral fat that is very inflammatory. And having that visceral fat of a wheat belly drives other diseases. It raises your likelihood of having diabetes, of having heart disease, having cancer and dementia. So that visceral fat is very bad stuff. And that's what I call a wheat belly. I also say I call it a bagel face because the skin is affected by wheat and grains. So eczema is exceptionally common, uh, commonly caused by wheat and grains. But also psoriasis, seborrhea, rosacea are often triggered by wheat and grain consumption. There may be some other issues to consider with rosacea uh, and some other rashes like small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. We talk about that a lot in our undoctored programs. But know that many skin rashes, including acne and dandruff, have wheat and grains as uh, among their triggers. I call it a pretzel brain also because brain health is impacted by grain consumption in a variety of ways. The, the list of effects on the human brain start with appetite stimulation. And that's done with by the uh, gliadin derived opioid peptides, the protein gliadin and wheat related proteins and other grains like cyclin in rye, hordein in barley, zein in corn are very poorly digested by humans. They're not broken down to single amino acids like other proteins. They're broken down to four or five amino acid long peptides. And these peptides bind to the human brain and stimulate appetite. The gliadin protein also stimulates autoimmune attacks and sometimes you can have autoimmune attack of the brain. There's a very aggressive form of dementia described by the Mayo Clinic in which the onset of memory impairment to death was a brief two years. And at autopsy, antibodies against the brain triggered by the gliadin protein were found. There are teenagers who get seizures from wheat and grain consumption, particularly temporal lobe seizures. And also, the amylopectin A of wheat and grains raises blood sugar really high. It's among the highest glycemic indexes of all foods. And every time your blood sugar goes up after, say, um, two slices of whole wheat bread with, in a sandwich or a bagel or a bowl of oatmeal, blood sugar goes up, you glycate proteins. That is, you glucose modify proteins, which make the proteins ineffective, essentially turns them into gunk or junk, and they accumulate. Well, that happens in the brain. It happens to the brain tissue, brain cells. You glycate those uh, uh, proteins and cells irreversibly. You can't undo those effects. That's a sample of the head-to-toe effects of wheat and grain consumption. So there's no organ that escapes it. Not the skin, not the pancreas, not the lungs, not the sinuses, not the heart, not the uh, intestinal tract, no organ escapes the effects of wheat and grains because they never belonged in the human diet in the first place. It was a mistake that humans made about 10 to 12,000 years ago in a moment of desperation. You don't have to continue to make that mistake. You can banish all wheat and grains from your diet and rediscover miraculous health and slenderness.